As Taiwan's quick rescue mission continues, Siji has set up an emergency aid coordination center. We meet a senior who has dedicated himself to support his family and Siji's recycling mission. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. In the beginning of our program, we bring you some updates on news related to Eastern Taiwan's earthquake. As of our press time, the number of casualties is still increasing. Let's continue to pray for the affected residents. In Hualien, the rescue team continues to race against time. Currently, there are still many earthquake victims missing. Here's our report. <laughs> The rescue team are racing against time and digging the wall with bare hands. Fifteen hours after the earthquake, Liang Shuwei, the last employee trapped inside Marshall Hotel, walks out with the rescue team's assistance. Liang Shuwei's condition seems fine and he was being put on the ambulance right away to undergo a throughout check in the hospital. Thinking back to the moment when earthquake occurred, he said it was just a blink of the eyes. I was on my shift at the counter and suddenly it was shaking, so I ran out to check what's going on. Then I ran just two steps, the entire building collapsed and I was hiding next to the pillar. Thank you everyone, my son is fine. His body condition is very well and I'm really thankful to you all. Liang Shuwei was saved after being trapped and his father appreciates the efforts from everyone. Unfortunately, another employee who was also trapped at the first floor counter, Zhou Zhixuan, has no signs of life when the rescue team found him. The midnight earthquake in Hualien made the 40 years old historical Marshall Hotel collapse and the fourth floor became the ground floor. Yunmen Tsui residential complex on number two Shangxiao Street had tilted about 45 degrees and continues to lean forward. The rescue team takes the elevator car to search for trapped people floor by floor, and they've saved a Korean woman who still has a clear mind on 9 a.m. of February 7th. However, there are still tens of people missing in Yunmen Tsui building, and the rescue missions gets more challenging as time passes by. This building must be structurally strengthened. Through the Civil Technician Association, we should learn how much we should consolidate the structure so it will be safe. The first five floors are all underground now, so the rescue team needs to dig into each floor to try to save people in the golden period. On top of the continuous aftershocks, Hualien is raining heavily and freezing cold at the moment, making the rescue progress slow. The 72 hours golden period to save people is counting down. The rescue team will not give up any hope to save as many people as possible. After the massive earthquake in Hualien, Ciji Foundation set up an emergency aid coordination center. Ciji has also dispatched about 400 people to provide hot meals and blankets for more than 1,000 local residents. After a whole night's torture, hot rice porridge is what warms people's body and heart the most in the morning. Surviving through a frightening night, volunteers surround local residents with care and love. After the main quake, there were hundreds of aftershocks. The locals are scared and long in ways to ease their worries. We're very scared because there are still many aftershocks, so we don't dare to sleep. We feel it's safer to sleep in here, but I can still hardly sleep. The temporary shelter is at the Hualien Arena Stadium. Local government and civilian organizations hosted a temporary shelter at the Hualien Arena Stadium, offering assistance needed. So she has also launched aid distributions right after the earthquake. Master Zhen Yan has gone into the distracted area in the morning to learn about the situation, and she felt deeply for earthquake victims. <laughs> At the Emergency Aid Coordinate Center, Master Zheng Yan reminds everyone with serious concerns that they must put safety first when rescuing people.
，咱唔通吼靠近，还要再靠近。Sisi volunteers can understand the urgent need of warmness from the earthquake victims being in the destructive zone themselves. After a sleepless night, Sijie volunteers use love as their tool for disaster relief and are determined to be the most reliable help for the earthquake victims as well as the rescue team. It is a coincidence that two years ago, on the same date, southern Taiwan was also rocked by a strong earthquake, causing the collapse of the Weiguan apartment building and 115 dead. Quake survivors continue to pray for those in Hualien. When the Mainong earthquake struck Taiwan, it had a maximum intensity of 7 in Tainan City. Tainan's Weiguan apartments collapsed on February 6 of 2016, the same day two years later, Hualien was struck by a major earthquake, causing Hong Jia's wife to have a sleepless night. When it was nearly 12 o'clock last night, I felt the earthquake. At that moment, my wife was very nervous. She then took my hand. In fact, yesterday was February 6th. At the time, Hong was buried under rubble for 12 hours and was then hospitalized for 285 days. He underwent many surgeries, including amputation of both of his legs. With the support of his wife and child, he was able to get through this tough time. Seeing that his scars are almost healed and the Weiguan building is under reconstruction, the earthquake in Hualien once again left him with mixed emotions. However, he only has these thoughts. I hope they are safe and sound. This is the only thing I hope for. Weiguan residents and those who live nearby are constantly praying for the disaster area. On the other hand, the affected residents living in the Dazhi market cannot hold back her tears. How could this happen once again? I feel very sad. I feel painful whenever I think of it. At the time, her home and her retail store, which she relied on for livelihood, were ruined. Fortunately, the market has started to rebuild. People who have gone through disasters back like then continue to encourage quake victims in Hualien not to give up. In the aftermath of the massive earthquake in Mexico last September, many schools have been damaged. In Hohula, a Catholic school with 75 years of history has been heavily damaged. The school principal is seeking help from Tsiji. Therefore, Tsiji Disaster Relief Team has gone there to assess the situation. The schools in Hohula are badly damaged. There's a Catholic school that has been completely ruined and needs to be rebuilt. We found the principal and started assessment in Hohula. They were going to Mexico City to request help because they lacked funding. This wall here, the sisters said, the beams are too thin. They were surprised after opening up the wall because the materials are of such poor quality. Recovery doesn't happen overnight. We have to make an effort to work and keep the faith. A school isn't defined by walls, but by students and teachers. It is time to ask ourselves, are we family or strangers? There's a kindergarten, elementary, middle school, and high school. There are 296 students, and they've all been relocated to other schools. The sister is worried because it's a long way to go to rebuilding. She's hoping that she can help. We're collecting information to see what can be done.
We continue to look at Suji's major events in 2017 from March to April. In March, Suji held a free clinic in Cambodia. At an aid distribution, Suji volunteers gave out rice from Taiwan to over 2,000 low-income families. Inspired by Suji volunteers' love, many locals donated their spare change to help those worse off. In Zimbabwe, Suji volunteers went to a village hit hard by floods to give out rice to those affected and cooked hot meals for them. They even helped repair a path and built drainage pipes for the village. In Africa, over 600 local volunteers from South Africa, Swaziland and Namibia gathered together for a six-day retreat held in Durban. Back in 2012, the volunteers in South Africa organized a team responsible for promoting Tsuji's missions in Africa. Thanks to their effort, as of 2017, Tsuji's work has been carried out in seven African countries, including Namibia, Swaziland. It's not about poor, but we are planting the seed of great love in Swaziland. Botswana. First of all, we have to love each other and Mozambique. The African volunteers are very diligent in learning Dharma Master Jungyan's teachings. This volunteer in Lesotho is 87 years old. Once a week, she woke up before dawn and walked four hours in freezing temperatures to listen to the Master's teachings. Because of the long walk, her feet were blistered. In April, to observe Tsuji's 51st anniversary, the Dharma Masters of Tsuji led everyone in bowing pilgrimages and a Dharma service. With each prostration, all Tsuji members prayed sincerely for the peace and safety of the world. I'm a Hindu, but I don't see differently. In Taiwan, Tsuji volunteers from 20 countries gathered together to share their work and experiences with one another. After their reports, the volunteers all made vows to the Master. Ecuador, after heavy rainfall caused widespread flooding, Suji volunteers from seven countries arrived to organize a cash for work program, inviting the locals to clean up the affected areas. Every day, Hundreds of locals took part in the Cash for Work program to help clean up their own communities. Back in March, Tsuji volunteers were also in Ecuador breaking ground for a church damaged by an earthquake in 2016. Pero yo sé que este saludo va a llegar de todo corazón porque tenemos el corazón rebosante de alegría por este momento que nos estás haciendo vivir. 
Gracias de todo corazón, Fundación Sushi. Sushi ya es, forma parte de nuestra, de nuestra familia y del Ecuador entero. Yo quiero ser voluntaria de Sushi. Los amo. In our next report, we'll meet a senior city volunteer who has dedicated himself to city's recycling mission wholeheartedly despite his old age. He accompanied his daughter to undergo city's volunteer training. Here's more. <laughs> I came here at 8.30 a.m. We close at 11.30 and I come again in the afternoon. Rain or shine, he comes here all the time. We call him the housekeeper of the recycling station because he knows everything. These are the keys for opening the door. There are 11 locks and all sorts of items. After I retired, I began working at a factory. Then I retired from the place in 1997. My daughter encouraged me to come here to do recycling. He has been doing this for about 15 to 16 years. He comes here to do recycling. He is dedicated to recycling work. He's 93 years old now, but he deposited 50 years of his age at Ziji's special bank. So he's only 40-some years old now. Volunteering allows me to exercise. While I exercise, I also use my brain. I have no problem with bending down and other movement. He is quite strong. He is as good as young people, although he is already 90 years old. He has played an important role. Daddy Wu is just like our own father, caring for our family. He is the treasure of our family and the treasure of our recycling station. After finishing his military service, he repaired big boats by the river to make a living. He had worked really hard because he has a lot of children, four daughters and a son. Since my mother suffers from poor health, we could only rely on him. I asked him to come over to my place for lunch. He said there's no need to do so. He would just cook some dumplings or noodles. The police call and said, do not hurry, take your time to come here. When I got there, he had passed away. I could not accept this fact because he died all of a sudden. My heart goes out to her. After all, she lost her husband at a young age. My younger sister encouraged me to undergo volunteer training. I said yes. Then the two of us underwent volunteer training together. It was good that he was there, accompanying me in the classes or when I did recycling. I am very grateful to my father. It is good that he's always there. Currently, the temperature differs greatly during day and night, and we remind you to be aware of heart problems and sudden sensory neural hearing loss. SSHL is also called ear stroke because it usually happens all of a sudden and will cause hearing loss of more than 30 decibels. Here's more. It's like a sudden explosion and I can no longer hear anything and I was very worried what I should do about my hearings. Zhen Tangyu is 40 years old and she can hardly believe that she will experience sudden sensory neural hearing loss. I kept doing this. It felt like when you're on the airplane and the ear pressure is unstable. When she looks back to her SSHL diary, she went on a mountain on a Sunday and suddenly felt unstable ear pressure and it got worse the next day. On the third day, the condition got better so she thought she had recovered. However, the fourth day, she experienced a sudden explosion and she delayed one more day to go to the hospital nearby. 
At this point, her left ear has completely lost hearing. The sixth day, she went to Taichung Cixi Hospital for a further check, and the doctor informed her that she must be hospitalized and undergoes treatment immediately. If there are three frequencies within three days, which means about 30 decibels of hearing loss, then we could define it as sudden sensor and neural hearing loss. When the cold wind blows, I feel a bit painful and the ear pressure is higher. It feels very strange. Sudden sensory neural hearing loss had few possible causes such as disease infections due to weather change, blood vessel embolism, damage of eardrums due to outside forces or pressure in life. It can happen to any age range and it's normally only one side of the ear. Why does some people call it an ear stroke? Because it happens suddenly like a brain stroke. It happens out of nowhere and the usual symptom is that the patient only uses one side of the ear when getting up in the morning. Her sudden hearing loss has scared her greatly, so she stayed in the hospital for five days and was being injected steroid to her vine consecutively. Eventually, she has recovered her hearing and now she can talk on the phone. Now I tell all my friends that if you have this situation, you must go to the hospital as soon as possible and don't underestimate it because it has a prime time to treat it. The prime treatment time is seven days, but in fact, I think the sooner the better. It doesn't mean you can only treat it in seven days, and if you pass it, you can't be treated. But I just want to emphasize that it's the best to come to the hospital as soon as possible. Be careful when the temperature differs too much and beware of disease infections and blood vessel embolism can all decrease the risk to have a year stroke. Most of the foreign fishermen who work in Penghu, Taiwan, live on fishing boats. As the space on the boat is quite breezy, many of the fishermen can feel very cold. After getting notified from the Wan An village, city volunteers brought them winter supplies, hoping to keep them warm in the harsh winter. The pieces of clothing have been placed in a box after being folded. The recycled clothes that we have packaged will be delivered to the Wai An village for foreign fishermen to wear. The weather is so cold that they cannot stand it. As the weather has been very cold in the past few days, Penghu City volunteers have received a message from Xiyu Township's Wai An village asking for help. The villagers there told us that the foreign fishermen who works there lacks clothes. When the cold current comes, they all sleep in the fishing boat because it's too cold. However, since the space is quite breezy, they usually don't feel warm. Besides three large boxes of winter supplies, volunteers have also prepared several bags of coats, trousers and cotton clothing. After driving for an hour, the volunteers finally arrived at the activity center in Waian village. Before they took out the supplies, many foreign fishermen could not wait to choose their clothes. As soon as the coats and trousers have been categorized on the table, more and more people have come to choose them. Everyone rushes to choose their clothes carefully. The clothing has kept the foreign fishermen warm in the harsh winter. In the aftermath of the quake that struck eastern Taiwan, children at Dai kindergartens in Kaohsiung and Tainan pray for the affected residents. In addition, they also donated their field claim banks to help the quake victims. We'll leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.